My friend once told me that I was perfect. And I thought they couldn't be farther from the truth. They knew a lot about me, but they didn't know about my upbringing. So when they asked me about my childhood, I said, picture a four-year-old me. About the height of your knee, and despite being a girl, she could never keep her hands clean. It was the first day of kindergarten, the first recess ever, when a girl and her entourage came up to me. They said I was too much of a boy to be a girl because of the things I wore, and the boys didn't like me because I was a girl. So the first day of kindergarten was a bust. My hip length braids and I sulked. I was later told this was the start of me being bullied, but here's the thing, I didn't know I was being bullied. I thought this was how friends worked, and I ultimately believed I had to try harder at everything to keep these people as my friends. But to these friends, my answers were always wrong. To these friends, playing soccer was weird because it lacked femininity. To these friends, I was the target because I was different. I felt like I couldn't make new friends though, not only because people disregarded my bad attempts at friendship, but because I'd be seen as the girl who couldn't keep any friends, I learned to stay in my lane no matter how narrow the road got. I learned to tell people it was a good day, even if I had flushed out my tear ducts. Fast forward to fourth grade, when I finally realized that not everyone was the same, my parents finally asked me why I was crying, and I stayed in my case. I swear my mom was hit by a stun gun. Their advice was to restart the whole friendship-making process, a statement I dreaded to hear them say. They also took me to therapy. I had no interest in going because I thought everyone would know a fourth grader had a shrink and to me that was mortifying. The only good thing I remember coming out of those sessions was a king-sized candy bar that you got for showing up. Fast forward two more years of sixth grade and I finally had my first good year. I didn't make any friends but I didn't lose any either. So it was a plus in my book. My teacher asked me to be the class photographer and I finally felt like I had the power. It was probably the best part of elementary school. The next year is the first year of middle school and I make my first close best friend. Our hearts beat to the same music. We had inside jokes and funny stories that really weren't that funny. And we would complain to each other about homework because it limited our freedom. The next year the world crashed down. Again, there was a school trip to the nation's capital that I went on. But with a fear of flying, that trip was already being compromised. The safety of the areas we're in were also questioned, making for more uneasy students, and a fire alarm of a person going off in front of you does not exactly help the situation. When we returned home and everything was supposed to be normal, it wasn't. I was the girl who was always on edge, the girl who couldn't keep her hands steady, the girl who just couldn't take it. People who were close to me before the trip made it clear the amount of distance between themselves and I. I was the A student, yet no one realized that I felt below average. Four therapists later. I had finally finished the 8th grade. The takeaway from them was that there were better people in the world, and eventually I would find them. I didn't believe the therapist, but eventually I found that they were right. And I'm not saying this was easy by any means, because it did take too many forced social situations, too many group projects, too many apologies for things I didn't do wrong. But I still consider myself lucky. Lucky because my turnaround time checked in with a little less than a year on the clock. And no, it's not as fast as the movies, but they are just movies. Movies with 30-year-old actors playing teenage characters with perfect skin and plastic surgery. Life is hard and messy. The door may be closed, but I could find my way through a broken window. There was power and persistence. I thought my name on a sports roster was a typo, but it wasn't. I completed my Girl Scout Gold Award as a freshman in high school. I used a hobby of mine to execute an assembly at my school. Eventually, I had realized that anyone who has made it has also dealt with a substantial amount of failure. But on an island of failure, you are not isolated. The turning point for me was joining my high school's ASB, a leadership program with a couple of classes full of a bunch of people who are just as crazy as I am. But we all found contentment in each other's existence. When you're stuck on a cycle of misery, quitting seems quite easy. But you don't go anywhere if you quit. Everyone has a story, everyone has a past. It's not always cupcakes and remembered birthdays. I'm pretty sure mine came with week old flowers. And now this is my comeback. I looked inside and did a lot of self exploration to find what I liked and what I wanted to do with my life. I learned not to accept the bad things people said about me. I remembered that, <clears throat> I remembered that rejection emails were only speed bumps, not roadblocks. Not everyone is going to stick around forever. They're going to come and go as they please. And if doing what you love was easy, then it would not be worth it. So in the words of a Nike ad, all your life you will be told no. 
All your life they will tell you you are the wrong height or the wrong body weight. They will tell you you're not talented enough or good enough to play this or be this or to achieve this. They will tell you no. A thousand times no until all the no's become meaningless. All your life you will be told no. So you will tell them yes. So yes. Thank you.